Well, well, welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 6th of November. Now, we're going to be looking at a small study today. Shouldn't take too long, but it's very important. And it's from Israel before vaccination for COVID-19 was introduced. And what it did, it looked at a large cohort of people who'd had COVID diagnosed by PCR. A large group of people as a control that had not had COVID, who never had symptoms and tested negative on PCR. And they compared the incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis between the two groups. And they followed them up for four, five, six months. The, the, the average follow-up was about 4.1 months, I think. But very substantial follow-up. And what they found is there was no difference between the groups. So the COVID group did not have more myocarditis and pericarditis than the group who'd never had the COVID infections. And this is completely, regardless of the vaccination, it's before the vaccinations were being uh, were introduced. Now, why don't more countries look at similar studies? Because we've got large cohorts of people who had COVID and didn't have COVID before there was vaccination. It's such an obvious study to do. And this groups, this, these groups in Israel have done it from University of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem to main medical universities in Israel. Now, we are seeing more pericarditis and myocarditis around at the moment. So from this data, it would appear from this data that the source of this increased amount of myocarditis and pericarditis is not covid infection per se not the covid infection itself and i think you can see the import of that statement that i've just made now don't take my word for it let's look at the data uh, this is the study here incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis in post-covid unvaccinated patients a large population based study and we'll see it is a, a very large uh, very large study indeed well conducted journal of clinical medicine check it out for yourself full things there you can download the pdf um very substantial peer-reviewed journal um myocarditis and pericarditis post-acute cardiac sequelae um, it also means that this is probably not a cause of many cases of long covid as well so the people that are suffering from cardiac conditions that people have assumed was caused by covid this data would indicate might not be caused by the COVID infection itself. Therefore, we need to look for an alternative cause or another cause or causes of the pericarditis and myocarditis that is around. You can see why this study is so important. We need to be looking for other causes. We always need to know the cause of disease, the etiology of disease. So the immune response, as we know, can potentially cause inf inflammation of the heart. Uh, what is the incidence is what they set out to, found, to find, looking for what the incidence was. And of course, they found out it was no greater than the other groups. Retrospective cohort study, looking back to the pre-vaccination days. So the pandemic was well underway in tw early 2020, but vaccination hadn't started. Um, study group who'd had the infection, 196,992. So pretty light. This is from the Clay Health Services in Israel. So a uh, large amount had the infection. So they're the study group. Pretty large number, impressive uh, data sets. Now, uh, March 2020 to January 2021. Now, what they actually recorded was inpatient myocarditis and pericarditis diagnosis. Now, these were patients that were bad enough to go to hospital to get their condition checked out. And it's some 10 days after a positive PCR and, as we said, an ongoing follow up. Israel vaccination program was initiated on the 20th of December. So what they actually did was they took patients who would reported up to the 15th of December. They left five clear days. So they're comparing patients who'd had COVID pre-vaccination period, patients who had not had COVID pre-vaccination period, comparing like with like. That's good scientific comparisons. Follow-up um, data, well, so but we'll leave that bit. It was censored on the 20, uh, 21st of February. But the point is they didn't take patients after the uh, vaccines were introduced. Now, COVID cohort who were never infected. So remember, the infected cohort was just under 200,000, wasn't it? Uh, there it is, 196,922. So that was the uh, 
patients who had it. They compared those against a larger group, over half a million who hadn't. These are the sort of numbers that <laughs> researchers dream of. You get very, very good data from these kind of numbers. And of course, it wasn't a selected group. They just took everyone from the health group. They just took the lot uh, that they were able to get large sample numbers. With at least one negative PCR test, no positive PCR test. So these people hadn't had it. They adjusted for age and sex. And they, of course, they looked at other things. They looked at uh, body mass index and uh, smoking and other things that were associated with heart disease. They were well aware of all these factors. As we say, calculated backwards from the 15th of December. So what are the results? Right, the post-COVID group, the patients that had had COVID, uh, nine patients developed uh, myocarditis. That's 0.0046 in the patients that had had it. Um, 11 were diagnosed with pericarditis. That's 0.0056. Now, remember, this is in the follow-up period. People who actually have COVID can get cardiac complications at the time. In the acute condition, that can happen. This is in the follow-up period, not in the acute period, the follow-up period. So there we see it, 0 0.0046 uh, developed um, myocarditis, 0 0.0056 developed um, pericarditis who'd had COVID. The ones that had never had COVID, 27 developed myocarditis, which was exactly the same, 0 0.0046. Coincidentally, it was exactly the same. And uh, people who'd never had COVID actually developed slightly more pericarditis, 0 0.088. And they put in these p-values. So that p-value 1 there, p that p-value of 1, basically what it means is there is no chance at all that this result could have arisen by chance. They were absolutely certain that this, that this is a genuine result. It couldn't have arisen by chance. The p-value was one. There was no difference, no significant difference at all between the groups. And that p-value there is 0 0.17. So again, basically no difference between the groups. It would need to go down to 0 0.05 before there was a difference. So there you go. I mean, that is really quite uh, impressive. The uh, after infections, 0 0.046 had myocarditis, 0 0.046 had myocarditis with no infection. In other words, they, these are just the, the, the sort of people that would get it anyway. And if anything, um, never having COVID was protective. And we're not saying that, of course, um, but, but, but it's certainly true that more people had it in that group. Therefore... The increased incidence of pericarditis and myocarditis must be caused by other factors from this Israeli data. Let's look at the graphs here, actually, pretty uh, interesting as well. Myocarditis, so uh, no COVID, had COVID. So we see that um, the no COVID group actually ended up a bit above the, actually a bit above the uh, the COVID group. Um, it had been in the other way. You, you can see it's just varied. I think these are just attributable to noise. Basically, we're saying there's no difference between these two groups in terms of follow-up over the six-month period here in terms of the risk of uh, myocarditis. Inflammation of the heart muscle for pericarditis. Again, if anything, we see that patients that didn't have COVID were slightly... <laughs> Uh, that they had uh, uh, slightly less. Yeah, they had a different incident. So basically, I mean, we're not we're not saying there's a statistical difference. There's no statistical difference here, really, because the p-value is 0 0.17. So basically, we're not. There's no significant difference between these two groups. It really is quite a profound result, really. Adjusted hazard ratio. No. So what were the risks? Well. Men developed a lot more than women. These were all over 18. So uh, men were about nearly four and a half times more likely to develop myocarditis than uh, women. And of course, you might remember that some of the early studies of this were done in the US military. And the male population there predominated. So that could have skewed the American military results. Just looking back, that's possible. Um, so... Men more likely to get myocarditis, regardless of whether they had COVID-19 or not. That didn't make a difference. But male sex did increase the risk. Pericarditis, men almost twice as likely. Again, hazard ratio 1.93, 93% more likely to get it. 
And people with peripheral vascular disease, just over four times more likely to get it. Not surprising, disease of the blood vessels. So there's something going on in the circulatory system there anyway. Follow-up median 4.4 months, 700,000 person months in the COVID group. Um, 2.1 oh, 2 million in the non-COVID group. Excellent. Very large, very large uh, sample sizes. So the conclusion... Post-COVID-19 infection was not associated with myocarditis. Post-COVID-19 infection was not associated with pericarditis from the Israeli data. The authors comment, we did not observe an increase, an increased incidence of neither pericarditis nor myocarditis in adult patients recovering from COVID-19 infection. Our data suggests there is no increase in the incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis in COVID-19 recovered patients compared with uninfected matched controls. This, of course, is remarkably good news. From the Israeli data, COVID-19 is not causing long-term myocarditis and pericarditis. Very, very good news. Yet we do have more myocarditis and pericarditis but it looks like the cause is not um, the actual COVID uh, infection. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you for watching.